Hey everyone, the name is Eric and today's video we are ranking the 16 personality types of the MySpriggs type indicator based on how popular or successful they were in high school. Now, this list has a lot of ranks. S rank, A rank, B rank, C rank or D rank or at the worst F rank. So are you gonna get an S or an F? Are you, what personality type are you? And how do you fall on this chart? Now, before we get started, let's talk about what it means to be successful in high school. Of course, it means having good grades, and of course, it means being liked by the teachers and uh, by your classmates. Of course, it means being popular and uh, being seen as successful by others. And it means uh, having a successful high school experience, feeling happy and satisfied and fulfilled by your time in high school. So a person who struggles in high school, who struggles with bad grades, a person who struggles to fit in, is going to fall low on this scale. Now, immediately we have some top contenders racing to the top immediately. We can think of, for example, the ESTP, the ESFP, the ISFJ. We can think of the ESFJ, we can think of the ESTJ. On the bottom, we also have some choices that come more naturally than others. We have INFPs, INTJs, INTPs, and uh, maybe, for example, the ENFP personality type. And uh, they fall on the bottom because they struggle on some level with one or more of these things. Let's start with the B ranks first. The B ranks, they are people that fall somewhere on the middle on this, a little bit over the middle. They are starting to perform well in high school. They uh, by no means are bad in school or struggle with grades or struggle to be liked or struggle to fit in, but they have some level of struggle, like they will never stick out, they will never uh, completely dominate, they will sometimes be seen as nerdy or geeky or a bit weird, but most of the time they will fit in and be invited to parties and uh, have a lot of friends or at least a few friends that they connect with and uh, that's going to be good enough. So in the B ranks we have ISTJs and uh, I place ISTJs on this uh, rank because they are people that generally are very intelligent, they get good grades, they study well, they study hard and they are usually on time, they never really get into tension, they never really uh, get into trouble, they never really mess up. Most of the time they stay in the line and uh, keep themselves in control. On the other hand of this we have, uh, for example, the ENTP personality type. And the ENTP is a person who is very opposite to the ISTJ but still in a similar level. A lot of time the ENTP can be seen as a bit geeky or dorky, but they still think they are cool, so that's good enough for most people. Most people will find them to be funny or cool or witty or charming because they think themselves to be funny, witty and charming. And uh, your own opinion of yourself goes a long way. And the fact that you think you are smart means often the teachers will as well. So ENTPs, they score us B ranks. They are not necessarily good in execution. They often mess up. They're often late. They often uh, make a fool out of themselves. They can be clumsy. They can uh, miss a test or they can uh, forget to study. But somehow they manage to scrape by and get through it anyways. And if they mess up, they can usually talk their way out of it. Along with the B ranks, we have the ISTP personality type. And ISTP is... Uh, uh, on this list because just like the ISTJ, they're very smart, very intelligent people. Uh, but in a sense, their struggle is that uh, often they are seen as uh, boring or dull by other people. And to some sense, uh, it can seem as if they have no personality. They are people that simply care about their school and their studies. And uh, in, at the same time, like they are not outcasts, they're not weirdos, like some other types might be. ISTPs, they're not people that are going to be high on either scale, they're not going to be very extreme in any sense. They are people that are going to be good at what they do, they might be p popular because they uh, do really well in basketball or in sports or in tennis or uh, some kind of school activity and so a lot of people like them and think, hey, this is a cool guy. 
but a lot of time people don't think anything more than that they think oh this is a cool guy or hey she's a cool pa- person but uh, beyond that people don't have a strong opinion of you one person that is a bit extreme on this scale is the ESFJ because the ESFJ is usually going to be one of the most popular types in school but also one of the ones that struggle the most with grades and with studies. A lot of time they are so focused on other people and fitting in that they have no time to pass their school and to uh, study and to get good grades and so a lot of time they will fall behind on high school uh, and will find themselves trailing after other people. ESFJs, they're usually uh, the people that everyone likes and adores, but uh, who just can't keep up, who are always trailing behind, who are sometimes called stupid or sometimes called a bit shallow or uh, so. And in a sense, what makes the ESFJ not fall lower on this scale is that Despite this, they are eager to try. They push themselves. They say, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to get there. I'm going to meet up and I'm going to uh, make people proud of me. And so I'm going to work hard to get where I am. And so they are able to get a hold of themselves and they are able to study up some good grades and at least land on a C or a B. Another type that uh, falls on this list, I think, is the ENTJ personality type. Now the ENTJ will typically have very high grades and uh, at the same time they will often be considered very unpopular or a bit aggressive. Sometimes in school they they will be regarded as one of the most aggressive personality types. They will get in fights with the teachers or with other people in their class. They will have very strong willpower, they don't like being told what to do. And so they can end up in detention or end up failing a class or getting in trouble because of this. But because they work so hard and because they are very intelligent, they are typically able to end up with good grades regardless. And they're typically able to recover from what they do. And uh, while they sometimes can be prone to self-sabotage, they are highly ambitious people. Finally, the last type on the B rank list is the ENFJ personality type. The ENFJ personality type is one that... uh, simply has one edge over the ENTJ. They're not necessarily as intelligent as the ENTJ, but they are able to follow the rules when necessary. They are able to and want to be liked by their teachers and by their classmates. They want other people to approve of them, even though they're a bit quirky and weird. So the ENFJ is like the weirdo that wants and seeks acceptance by the tribe. So the ENFJ is the person that uh, sticks out and is clumsy and says stupid things sometimes and uh, is passionate, but also at the same time is very loving and caring about other people and who cares about other people's opinions. So they will still try to get acceptance by other people and that effort is what lends them the B rank, the effort they put into trying to get good grades and trying to fit in and trying to be popular despite having a very wacky way of thinking, a very high creativity, uh, unusual behavior, odd interests and quirky passions. Now, if we drop on this scale to the C ranks, we meet the three distinct personality types, the ISFPs, the ENFPs, and the INFJs. Yeah, these three types, they fit on the C rank on the worst adapted types for high school. So they are people that struggle to fit in with high school, people that uh, might sometimes be good at school, or they don't care about school, or they don't care about popularity, or they don't care about anything. So with the ENFPs, ENFPs are interesting on this list because they are very inconsistent. Uh, A lot of time they are still searching for their identity in high school and it takes a long time for the ENFP to find themselves. I mean, after a while, ENFPs tend to become known as strong individualists, but a lot of time in high school they're still seekers, they're still mixing out, playing with different identities, ways of dressing, talking, speaking, acting, doing things. They don't know what to study, they don't know what major to get, they don't know what, what they want to do, and they're often shy, you know, so... 
with the popularity game, they're often struggling to open up to and connect with other people because they feel so weird and different from everyone else. ENFPs, they tend to feel very different from the rest of their classmates. And uh, even if they like other people and want to talk to others, they can be a bit shy to introduce themselves to other people. So they can find themselves wanting to connect with other people because they are extroverts, wanting to build relationships, but not knowing who to talk to or uh, who which group in high school to hang out with or uh, where they belong. And they can often feel like they don't belong anywhere. INFJs I put on the C rank level because INFJs they're typically people that uh, can be good at school and can be popular but don't care about it. A lot of time they simply don't care about the popularity game. They don't think about what other people think about them. They don't think about whether the teachers will give them good grades or not. They're not in high school for anyone else but themselves. A lot of time they're very focused on their own creative projects and their own interests and that can cause them to neglect high school or to uh, cut class or to miss out on what's happening around them. They might skip parties because they're simply not interested in that thing. They might uh, uh, say I don't want to hang out with anybody right now and they might find themselves engaging in something else. A lot of time they're just lone wolf people and that is what gets them on the C rank of this list. Finally, ISFPs, they're also on the C rank because they simply don't care so much. They, they want, of course, to get good grades and they want to fit in, but a lot of time they struggle with it and uh, they don't want to compromise themselves or their identity to fit in. So a lot of time they can struggle to connect with their peers because... Uh, they don't want to do something they don't want to do. They don't want to be somebody who they're not. So uh, they can be seen as a bit strict and a bit to themselves and that they simply don't want to uh, go to a party because they don't like drinking or they don't want to uh, do this or that because they have these values. And um, that can get other people to be upset with them or annoyed with them or people might think, oh, you think you're better than me? <laughs> so Eyes of Peace might have that problem. On the D rank, actually let's move to the A rank first before we go to the D rank. On the A rank, people who distinguish themselves highly are ESTJs, ESFPs and ISFJs. Why these three types? ISFJs I think are rather obvious. They are people that will be liked by the teachers but still study motivated and still focused on themselves, conscientious, desiring to fit in but also desiring to uh, live up to their parents' expectations. So if their parents come from study backgrounds, they're going to be people that want to study hard and to push themselves to also be successful in school and to get good grades. They don't like an F, they don't like a 99%, they want a 100%. So they're reachers, and because they are reachers, they might sometimes become a bit uh, strict and boring in a sense, because they... Uh, they can become so focused on their studies that they cut themselves off from friends and family. Not that because they don't want to, because a lot of time ISFJs are highly social people that want to connect with other people. Uh, and this is why they are also A ranks. They don't tend to become unpopular, regardless of what they do. They don't tend to become unpopular. Because when they need to connect with people and when they need to uh, retouch and when they've finished their studies, they still have time to go out and party or meet up with friends or to uh, hang out with family members and chat with the people around them. They often help their peers in school. They help other people study. They make sure other people stay ahead. And so a lot of people tend to like them. One type that might surprise people on the A rank is list as the ESFP. ESFPs, they are unlike ENFPs, people like who know who they are and what they want. So ESFPs, they are people that can be highly study motivated and don't get burnt out by failure. And they don't tend to become as stressed by the social game and they're not as shy. So ESFPs, they tend to become anybody's friend and even though they can be a bit uh, chaotic at times and a bit unpredictable, ESFPs are people that can then also become liked by the teachers. ESFPs are people that 
uh, can become anybody's friend, you know, and they learn very quickly. Actually, ESFPs, they learn very quickly. What they do is they see how other people do things. They look at the smart people and then they go, I'll try that one as well. And they turn out to be really good at it. They can mimic the strategies and school is a lot of time about copying and mastering strategies. And that's just ESFPs. Finally on this list, perhaps no surprise, is the ESTJ. And the ESTJs, they're definitely hardworking and conscientious and motivated people. Sometimes they'll get into fights at school with their classmates or teachers, but most of the time they respect authority and so they focus on staying within the rules and so they don't end up in detention and they don't end up in struggles with the teachers or with the principal. ESTJs, they can also become fairly popular because, yeah, simply nobody dares to disagree with them, nobody dares to dislike them, nobody dares to question them. And so, yeah, an ESTJ will basically steamroll their way through high school. On the D rank, we have two types, the INFP and the INTJ. INFPs, they can be often like the INFJ in their own world and so don't notice the world around them. Uh, unlike the ESTJ, they are people that have no ambition in school. They don't study or feel like they must study or must get high grades or must be very successful. They are usually people that, they, they are, as long as I get the good grade, I'm happy with that. As long as I get a B, I'm, that's okay by me. And sometimes they run into struggles, they might end up uh, doubting themselves, so they might become uh, a bit confused like the ENFP, they can struggle with their own identity and who they are. And so they can become very introspective and quiet and can detach themselves from other people around them. During these times of self-exploration, their grades might also suffer as well as their attendance, and that's why they end up on the D rank. Now, INTJs are a bit of a surprise on this list, why did I put INTJs as D ranks? Well, they're usually perfect grade people, but INTJs, they're a bit, uh, from what I've noticed, too edged. There's INTJs that are incredibly ambitious and inc incredibly motivated, and there's INTJs that are incredibly nihilist, in a sense that they feel apathetic about school. They don't care about it. Why should I study? Why should I get good grades? Why should I do what the teacher tells me to? INTJs, they just don't get it. They don't get why they should fit in, why they should try it, or why they should do anything. And while they can, if they figure out why, if they figure out why they should do it, they can even become S ranks, they can even push themselves to become one of the top performers. Uh, a lot of INTJs struggle because of this. So INTJs, they're simply people that could go either way. They could be really good or they could be really, really bad in school. And I've seen this, I've seen INTJs that struggle completely and never attend school and focus on gaming or programming or some other personal interest. And I see INTJs that are hyper motivated. Okay, let's start with uh, once again summarizing the best and the worst traits of uh, s rank student. So an s rank person is a person who fits in, a person who is liked by everybody, a person who does well in school, gets good grades, is liked by the teachers and a person who will get through high schools uh, seen as successful but beyond that a person that will really enjoy their time in high school and will really be happy and will really thrive in high school and this is the ESTP personality type no person enjoys high school more than ESTP I think no person enjoys the learning, the exploring, the people, the games, the sports, the actions, the events, the things that happen when you are a high school student. At this point, there is no need to be responsible yet, no need to be successful, no need to be um, entrepreneurial. Uh, but the only thing you need to do is really have fun and push yourselves and your limits. And that's something ESTPs, they're good at. They're pushing and testing their limits. They see, can I be good at that? Can I become good at sports? Can I become good in school? Can I improve in this subject? Can I become better at that? And beyond that, while they do, they have a lot of fun. And this is what tends to get them to become very popular around other people. People enjoy watching the ESTP try and fail and work and better themselves and people enjoy the, ENT, the ESTP's sense of humor while they do it. And they enjoy how easygoing and carefree the ESTP can be in these situations. And that's why I give ESTPs the S rank as the best, 
most well-adjusted personality type. Now, <laughs> let's move to the most poorly adjusted personality type for high school, the INTP personality type. Now, while the INTP might become amazing in university level educations, INTPs really, really struggle with and hate their high school experience. Most INTPs I know talk about their high school experience as if it was hell. That it was literal hell for them. Fitting in, uh, playing the game, the social level, the social aspects, the teachers, expectations, school, the grading system. INTPs struggled with all of it. INTPs don't understand why they have to listen to their teachers, they question their school books, they struggle with the reading material, they don't like uh, the people around them, they don't understand uh, how to fit in and how to get popular, they often feel like outcasts, and yeah, they generally have a bad time in high school. Honestly, the high school was the least adjusted to the INTP personnel type, and I think INTPs need a different school system than uh, for example, the ESTP personality type does. INTPs need a research-oriented school system where they can question and think critically about the material they consume. INTPs need to engage with people based on similar interests, so they need more freedom in school to choose what they want to study and learn about. And they need to be able to connect with people that are like-minded, that share similar interests or ways of thinking about things. But they don't get that, and that's why they get an F on this high school ranking personality system. So those are the 16 types in high school. Which type do you think does the best in high school, and which type do you think does the worst? How did you do in high school, and what is your personality type? Thanks for watching this video, and see you all in the next one.